Every day it seems like there's a new service popping up that connects people who want things with people who have things. If I want to go for a ride, I don't have to worry about buying a car or renting a car. I can get on my smartphone and in a matter of minutes, I can find someone who's willing to take me there. If I want a home cooked meal with services like Feastly and Eat With, I'm able to just find people in my community that are willing to cook a dinner for me. They'll even let me come to their house and eat it. This is exciting stuff, but with all of this excitement, People are really trying to figure out, what do we do with this? This is something that we've never thought of before. Now regulators are stepping in and trying to figure out, well, how do we treat these new services? But the question we really ought to be asking ourselves, is this any different than the way we've ever done things before? Now let's think about that for a minute. Let's go back to my parents 25 years ago. If my parents wanted to go out on the town for the night, they'd have to find someone who was willing to watch me and my siblings. Typically, they'd go down the street, find Tori, the high schooler, and have her come on over and watch us for the day. But that was really dependent on whether Tori was available and whether Tori wanted to do it. The beautiful thing about the sharing economy is it's taken this really simple idea of community and it's no longer confined to the neighborhoods we live in and the people we know, but it's been extended to the entire world. If I want to go to New York or LA or Paris, I don't have to worry about finding a friend that's going to let me borrow their couch or sleep in their room for the weekend. In a matter of minutes, I can get on the internet and have hundreds of rooms and couches available to me. This has huge potential for consumers and producers. Unfortunately, all of these potential benefits are at risk and the sharing economy may actually be stopped in its tracks. Old, outmoded forms of regulation are being used to regulate these new sharing economy firms and are ultimately stifling their continued growth and development. But the problem with that is that the sharing economy firms alleviate the need for these regulations in the first place. The two-party rating system that Uber and Feastly and Airbnb and most of these firms all employ is a way to overcome the informational problems that the regulations were put in place to solve in the first place. If I have a bad experience with a driver, I give them a bad rating. If a driver has a bad experience with me, he gives me a bad rating. So people with the bad ratings, no one will want to trade and borrow and buy and sell from them. And the people with the good ratings will get all of the business. And at the end of the day, it pushes everyone to be the best version of themselves that they can to stay in the market without the need for regulations in the first place. So the ultimate question here is, will policymakers evolve and adapt with all of these new firms coming in and the sharing economy growing and blossoming as it has? Or will they apply yesterday's regulation and yesterday's theory to today's economy and all of the benefits that it has for consumers and producers?